bike tracks and you know along the canals, you know golf courses and things like this. Coyotes that are just as used to being around people as the ones you got rid of. Okay. So here's a, a map of the Phoenix metropolitan area uh, from 2012. Uh, there was, I believe, 300 and some no 600 some kind of calls or whatever. Um, Really, not many places where we're not getting coyote calls, right? You know, and and some of these areas, you know, where you do see holes, you know, out here, you know, kind of out in this, this farming country, they're not going to call us to report a coyote. They're handling the situation. They're probably shooting it, you know, which is which is legal in, in some in a lot of instances. Okay, but again, you know, there's really no place where there's not coyotes. Um, really, you know, we haven't seen them in downtown Phoenix. Some of those are some of those are kind of anomalies down there, like these two here. Someone could probably decided to live in Phoenix and then short down Phoenix, so it's going to put a dot in the center. But these two right here, yeah, those are definitely Cairo calls, right around Third Avenue, Third Street, South of Thomas. So um, we're going to talk about some long-term solutions, things that we can do together, uh, things we can do to help each other out. You know, first and foremost, don't feed coyotes. Um, if people are feeding about feeding coyotes, we want to know about it. Um, some of the things we can do around our own home, removing uh, or altering uh, the attractants, clearing the low bushes, you know, with your oleanders, you know, trim up some of that low vegetation where a coyote can't hide under there. You can see under there. If you can see under, the, in, under your bushes, coyote can't hide in there, okay? Uh, but also removes the hiding cover for the, the rabbits and things like that that the coyotes are looking to eat, okay? Pick up your fallen fruits, you know, uh, change your bird feeding. You know, I'm not, not against bird feeding, but just do it, you know, in a, in a manner that we're to lessen the amount of birds who hits the ground, okay? Um, clean your barbecue grill, secure garbage. But the other thing is, is, is actively discouraging coyotes. Um, you know, community-wide effort. You know, we used to recommend, you know, years ago, how many people have seen the, the shaker can? Okay. You know, this used to be a, a great tool. And, and it still works pretty well on javelina. If you throw this in the middle of the javelina herd, you can see them all kind of disperse and they'll go crazy and stuff. Though, so, um, this may get a coyote's attention, but it's how many how many people are scared by that? You know, and that really, you know, um, you know, when it was new, it probably worked very well. Now coyotes go seeing that trick. Okay, you know, you know, throw it at them. You know, if that's all you got, you know, okay. But there's some better things out there. Again, pepper spray, you know, if you if you, all you got is you know, a handful of rocks, pepper. Be rude to these animals, okay? We need to let them know that we're the top dog on the block, not them. Some of the things that we've found that are not only effective, certainly cost effective well as well. You know, pepper spray and bear spray can be kind of expensive, okay? This, this jug has seen some miles here. I bought it probably about four years ago for 79 cents at Walmart. Okay, this is household ammonia. Okay, don't get the lemon scented. Okay, it doesn't work very well if we found out. Um, about a 20% solution of household ammonia. This on the back of it says it's an irritant. Okay, if it's in your eyes, wash your eyes, all that stuff like this at this concentration. And this isn't nowhere near anhydrous ammonia. Okay, this is only about 5 to 10% ammonia was mixed with water and some other things. Okay. Um, we're recommending 20% household ammonia, rest the water, and get yourself one of these high-powered squirt guns. There's super soakers, you know, common brand name, okay? Um, the beauty of this model is that you can have your ammonia pre-mixed, pre load it up with a cap on it, and this model here will accept up to a two-liter bottle, of, and they're all the same size here okay um, this one will shoot up to 20 feet there's models of super soaker out there that will shoot 30 40 feet or better okay how many people are seeing coyotes within that range right now quite a bit I'm sure okay all right um, you hit a coyote with a diluted ammonia okay on your property you will probably never see that coyote on your property again okay this is an irritant and if it's on them Curtis you want to pass that around let everyone get a good sniff of that I'm just kidding. Um, um, it's smelling salt. It, it, it's nasty stuff. Okay. Think about an animal that's probably got 30 times our nasal capacity. Okay. Think how bad that would burn our nasal senses. Okay. This is on them. Okay. They can't get away from that. They're going to remember that negative experience. You're trying to do two things by spraying a coyote with ammonia. Okay. One, you're trying to 
uh, get that condition, that coyote, to associate the location with a negative experience, thereby learning to avoid that location. Okay. Secondarily, though, and this is the best thing, though, is if they know that a human is causing this irritation, you're helping yourself, your neighbors, and your and your neighborhood, your community. Okay. And this is, you know, where we'll see the best effect and stuff. Those the more people doing these kinds of things. Okay. You know, removing the food sources, stuff that we have control over. You know. Not, I'm not telling you to go, you know, knock down the golf course or, you know, take out your grass and all that stuff, though. Um, but the things we have control over, you know, we can certainly, you know, make a change in behavior of these coyotes. Right now we're seeing coyotes that are not afraid of people because that's the norm, okay? There's no reason for these coyotes to be afraid of people right now, okay? So there's other things, though, to keep a coyote out of your yard. Again, these people have also probably seen the Coyote Roller. Uh, found at coyoteroller.com. It's a commercial product. Um, I did talk to one guy that he said, he goes, oh yeah, I see that, that looks good. So I'll have my guys work on it today. So I mean, he's got guys that can make his own, so I mean, you know, that, that's another option for you. Some of the other types of fence modifications I've seen is some of that wrought iron stuff, decorative stuff, you know, as long as there's not a place for them to get a foothold on top, okay? Um, coyote, what happens, okay, I'll do a little demonstration. The coyotes, you know, that a six foot fence or higher is what they recommend on the website. Coyotes need two bounds to get up and over. So what they do is they jump up, use their momentum, get a hold of the top of the fence or wall, use their momentum to, with their, after they get their front paws up there to pull themselves up and over. What happens is they can't get a foothold on the top of the fence or wall and basically take a header right into that fence. Okay, so so you have to have it on a perimeter. Okay, you know um, there there's other things and stuff though. There's a bunch of stuff out there. You know, what we're, we're talking about is, you know, a, a 79 cent bottle of ammonia and a $10 super soaker. You know, you can spend $28 for a four foot length of fence. Um, real quick, sir? The, the ammonia spray you're talking about, would that help to spray the top of your fence? Not really. Uh, ammonia is a highly volatile substance, you know, like, kind of like uh, rubbing alcohol. It will quickly dissipate, especially as it gets hotter. And, and this time, you're more, more of it's about the, the humidity level. It's real dry. Um, there's talk of you know people taking you know adult male urine and peeing around their yard and one I don't know if anyone wants to take a squirt bottle or who's the guy that wants to pee in a bottle for him you know there's there's all kinds of crazy stuff that's out there you know um, you know I I'm not sure how effective it is but kind of with a lot of these things the more things you do the better off you're going to be uh, ammonia can work very well like in small areas for for like javelina for example. Um, let's see, like ammonia soaked rags, if they're kind of bedding down in an area or they're around some sensitive plants, things like that. Um, it says next slide. Um, how many here are here in Paradise Valley, Mommy Mountain, um, Camelback Mountain and stuff though? Um, and kind of along those same lines, they're getting very comfortable around people too. Um, this uh, ammonia and stuff though, we had to go rescue a, a, one of the little reds out of a, a concrete uh, enclosure. You know, it was only you know, 10 inches or something. I guess the little one couldn't get out. Mom, when we got up there, mom was huffing and puffing at us, clacking her teeth. We sprayed the ammonia. We even missed her. Okay, mom caught wind of that ammonia, took off running. Okay, we were able to kind of work on getting the little one out though, and it's kind of like a grease pig. These little things are really a lot faster than you think. Um, three other big javelina, adult javelina. You know, kind of heard the commotion, came came up to that same area. They stopped, and turned, and ran the other direction. So, so, so we know this stuff works works well, works very well. So, though, until someone can tell me, no, Darren, you're full of shit. Um, it doesn't work. Okay. Um, then we got to rethink everything, and then we'll have to come back to the drawing board, and we'll maybe come up with something new, or whatever, maybe some pepper balls, pepper paint balls, or who knows what, and stuff though. But again, this is not only effective, but cost effective, okay? You know, you can you can spend thousands of dollars on modifying your fencing. You know, there's a lot of other crazy products out there. You know, uh, you can spend, this, you know, a little bit, little bit of money and spend time and effort by dealing with these animals by with the, with the super soaker, or you can throw a lot of money at it, you know, or, you know, close your pets, close, you know, you know, section off a portion of your yard. There's all kinds of strategies to you know keep your pet safe and things like this. But by keeping coyotes out of your yard, you're not really changing the coyote's behavior. That's why we recommend being aggressive towards them. So, um, javelina, uh, pretty easy to deal with, and certainly, uh, like I said, the shaker can works very well. Most instances where where people are say they were charged by javelina, um, it's an instance where they come around a corner. It's it's at night, 
And what, what do people do when they see a pack of javelina? <gasps> you know, they freeze. These animals don't see that well, um, but they see movement very well. Okay, if you've got a little bit of breeze blowing in your face, you basically, and you stop moving, you become invisible to them. Okay, one javelina may have saw the movement and sounded the alarm and took off the other direction, and the rest of them just freaking out and running willy nilly. Some of them running right into the face of you know what you would be the, your 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 danger. Okay, clap your hands, stomp your feet, yell at them. So no. we have seen some of these animals become aggressive um, in the past. Um, but it's, most, it's almost always centered around medium to large sized dogs. They're looking at those dogs as they would a coyote. They're gonna, and they will go on the offensive to chase a coyote away from their young and away from the, the herd. Okay? Um, but again, the ammonia works very well. I think, you know, these animals can smell grubs down in the soil you know, 10 to 12 inches and dig for them. You know? So yeah, that ammonia is going to be very effective on them as well. Okay? So, um, you know, again, most issues. Um, the last javelina bite we had was uh, in Tempe. Uh, people at uh, an all night, 24 hour lab were, you know, their big thing at night and they're out for smoke breaks is to feed the javelina. And then some, uh, someone during the day showed up, didn't know that was what was going on, and got bit on the butt. So. Um, again, this is, a, this is actually in Fountain Hills. People were on their, in their uh, balcony, you know, over in a condo complex throwing, throwing food down to them, you know. Yeah, you can see the carrots there. They're cute little guys when they're not small and stuff though, but kind of just a weird goofy animal, but pretty easy to deal with, if, you know, by using the ammonia. Um, they, they don't, they're not predators. They're, they're looking for plant material. That's what the problem is, is with property damage with them, eating your plants and things like this. And there are strategies, planting different types of plants that are heavily resistant. Certainly ways to protect your plants as well, so. so. Um, bobcats are starting to become the new coyote. Um, they're, they've started to figure it out uh, a couple years ago. Where people are is where the food sources are. Um, mainly, they're looking for for birds, uh, rabbits, things like this, uh, and mainly the bigger birds. You know, the quail, the, the doves, uh, pigeons, and things like this. And they're very good. I mean, being a cat, they're good at catching things and stuff. Though, um, you don't need to go to the extreme of um, you know the super soaker or we I mean, use super soaker, but you don't need the ammonia with 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 uh, bobcats. Just turn the hose on. Uh, like a domestic cat, they don't like being soaking wet. Okay, they'll see that as an irritant. It may take you a couple times, you know, or you know, if you want to go right off the bat and use ammonia, that'll work too. Okay. Um, this is actually in the East Valley, um, and this is what actually happened when they got rid of their coyotes. And they had very few coyotes. There was a there was a um, a, a troop of uh, Harris hawks that um, just weren't doing the job. So that's a lot of rabbits. Okay. So they hired a company to come in. And, um, actually, uh, cottontail rabbits are, are uh, considered small game. You know, they are an edible species. Um, so we, uh, the, the golf course actually needed to get a permit, um, and then they just put that person on the, the company down there as an agent. He came in using non-toxic shot and killed them and took them to like Liberty Wildlife or Adobe Mountain places that could be they could be used as food sources for predators and, and uh, birds of prey and stuff. So. But see, you know, again, that's what happens, you know, kind of when you mess with that balance of predator-prey relationships. Okay, um, and these are some of the problems that I deal with, and this is where Arizona Game and Fish Department sits right here on the fence. Okay, um, we got people that are feeding animals, and then there's people that are concerned that they're you know, destroying his way of life, his, his property, and things like that. Um, you know, be a good neighbor, you know, try not to do things that you're, you know, going to attract animals, um, and in reality, it's actually illegal to feed wildlife. Okay. Um, in the state of Arizona, a person commits unlawful feeding of wildlife unintentionally, knowingly, or recklessly feeding, attracting, or otherwise enticing wildlife into an area. Even if you say you're putting bread on the ground for, for birds, and if coyotes and javelin are coming in to eat it, you're feeding wildlife. Okay. This affects counties that have a population of 280,000 or more. So right now, Maricopa County, Pima County, and Pinal County are affected by this law. Okay. Um, and I do believe Paradise Valley has a town ordinance um, and uh, against feeding of coyotes specifically. Okay. And actually, years ago, Chief Winterstein actually went down and, and uh, spoke to the legislature, and this is, you know, he helped us get this law uh, uh, drafted on a state level. So, what do we do? How do we work this out? Okay. Um, most of these issues um, are fairly easy to deal with. Okay. 
if I, as being a wildlife biologist, I wish I could, you know, manage wildlife. Well, that's not the case. Most of my job deals with managing people and talking to people's issues with wildlife. These animals are si simply reacting to their environment, okay? Um, as humans, we've modified the environment. Uh, we've created opportunities uh, for wildlife. Uh, as humans, we dominate the environment. We have control over the environment to, to a lot of extent, okay? Uh, and human behavior is the only thing we can directly change, okay? But if we change human behavior, we can affect the change in wildlife, okay? So that's where it's a, uh, it's a, it's a human thing and it's a numbers game. The more people doing these things, the better off everyone's going to be. You'll see quicker results, longer lasting results when we have more people. So basically, um, this resolution of conflict where it works the best is when you, you're dealing with it as a neighborhood, as a, as a, as a, as a community, the more people involved, like I said, okay? Talking about living with wildlife, okay, um, uh, requires, a, it's a dynamic process. It's, these things are, these things ebb and flow, you know, rabbit populations go up and down, coyote populations go up and down, at least the, the, the ones in your visible, visible area, okay? Uh, we 